You're live. We're live. Good morning, First Baptist Church. Truly, it's a blessing to be here.
Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity and privilege to come boldly to the throne where you await to hear from your people. We know, Father, that you watched over us last night. And we're thanking you right now that you'll do the same thing. But before we go any further, we'd like to ask you to forgive us for any sins that we may have committed. If you find anything that's not pleasing in your sight, we ask now that you remove it and cleanse us with the precious blood of Jesus. And have us to be the type of people you want us to be. Holy spiritual, sanctified, set apart the good works and good things. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God. Lest any man or woman boast about what they have done. We know, Father, it's not about what we have done, but it's about what you have done from the beginning of time to this present morning in time. And, Father, you've done so many things in our lives. You've done great things. You've done good things for us this week. You allowed us to triumph. You allowed us to see another day. A day we've never seen before, we'll never see it again. But God, we thank you that we're here in your presence right now. We invoke your presence. We welcome your presence in this place. Father, we ask that you look upon the sick and the afflicted, the oppressed, and the, those that are in bereavement. We know those who have had loss, we know that to be absent from the physical body is to be present with you. And we just thank you that right now, in your presence, is the fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord will be our strength as we continue in this day. Father, I ask right now that you bless your people that are here today. Bless them one by one. You know what they stand in need of at this hour. And God, your word says that you will supply every need according to your riches in Christ Jesus. So we just want to thank you today. And we want you to have your way today. Do what you want to do. Have your way, Father. It's all about you. You are Lord of Lords. You are King of Kings. You reign and you rule. We give you praise on this glorious day. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. You brought us this far in 2020. And God, we know that you'll take us the rest of the way by faith. 
So we're going to look to you. We're going to believe you, Lord. We're going to trust you because we know that you have a master plan for our lives. And you said that you didn't plan to hurt us or harm us, but to give us a good and expected end. So we just thank you, God, that we can look to you and we can see our way all because of you. You're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. You keep your word because you are so faithful. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, for all that you do. Amen. Amen.
thank the Lord for a good day, amen. Sun is shining, feel the cool breeze, and the Lord has been good. He has given us another day. I want to thank the brothers of the uh, ins instruments, uh, Brother Don and uh, the Carpray, amen. And the drummer, amen. Thank God, and thank God for this group, amen. Thank God for them amen, doing amen. a good job. And I thank God for them. Whatever I ask them to do, they do. They don't complain. They do. And I thank God for them. And I also want to give my good friend, Deacon Reggie Anderson. Good man, good man. He, he's been with us from the beginning. He's been with us from the beginning. And we thank God uh, for him. For him putting his time in. And he's not finished when he leaves here. He go home and put it together. And we want to thank God for his patience and for his time and his love for his church. Amen? Amen. And thank God for those that came out this morning. Now, we know that the, you can hear us through the radio on your car, am I right? If you can hear me, blow your horn. Good, okay. Yes, Okay, that's good. Okay, hold it up. That's good. Okay. We thank God for the horn blow. Thank you. Amen. And I just want to say we're going to move on. We're so glad to have our, our good friend, the Reverend Edgar Howard. He is now the pastor of the Manhattan Baptist Church in Manhattan. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. What we learned is God is for you. Who could be against you? Amen. God has blessed you. Rockland County with this good preacher who been at Calvary Baptist Church. We thank God for the years that he's been with us in Rockland County, and I never forget his friendship that I have with him down through the years. He has been a, a good pastor. He has been a good friend, and I thank God for him. And I thank God for us for coming out of here for our second uh, yard service. Amen? Amen? Amen. We thank God for that. And Thank God, I prayed that the Lord would let the sun shine. But when I sat up here, the clouds was overhead, kind of chilly out here. I said, Lord, send some heat. And he moved the clouds, and I feel the sunshine. Ain't God good? Yes, yeah, God is good. All you do is got to ask and believe, and God will do. So I want to say that after uh, our group will give us another selection, and the next voice you will hear will be the Reverend Edgar Howard, the pastor of the Manhattan Baptist Church in Manhattan, New York. Let us all say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. amen. God bless.
preaching staff who with him today. To all of you, my brothers and sisters, members of the first Baptist Church. And once again, I am excited and delighted to have been asked again by Pastor Mac Williams to come to First Baptist Church. Fellowship. I'm so happy to be here. Thank God for his good name and godly disposition. We've been here in the Spring Valley area for quite some time. He has done an excellent job. Why we have been here. I know if he ever decides to leave, this place will never be the same. And now, I was home uh, during the uh, summer, home for me in Lynchburg, Virginia, and over in Amherst County, the church they had service outside. What they did was that whenever they wanted to help the preacher, they would blow the horns. So uh, if I hear a horn blowing, then that will tell me that somebody is trying to help me. If I don't hear any horn blowing, so I don't know what to say about that, but we hope you somebody will Lord at home. Now, yeah, thank you, Thank you, man. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I'm going to assume that 10 minutes of preaching will be sufficient. That's my assumption. Yeah. It's windy up here, and uh, I uh, preach by uh, notes sometimes, and if the wind take away my sermon, I will have to go from memory. Pray the Lord somebody. I want to call your attention. Love brothers and sisters to the book of the first kings in chapter number 18. I uh, I'm going to begin reading from that 18th chapter at verse number 20, 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long haunt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him by the word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. The Baal prophets are uh, 450 men. Let them therefore give us two more.
let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well. Now, I know that train not going to me. And I uh, want to talk briefly this morning about a protesting prophet. Protesting. Now, there is art and science as known as the politics. against what is right. But Elijah takes a stand against what is wrong. Now, we have in our midst today in this country uh, people who protest against the black movement. Black power movement, that Black Lives Matter. And some people are protesting against it. But that's not anything to protest against. But there's some wrong that needs to be protest against. And I'm hoping and trusting that when November comes, everybody will get together and register a protest. Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. Register a protest. Uh, come, uh, November. Uh, praise the Lord. I hear you, brother. Yeah. yeah. So, so Elijah is raising a protest. Against people and against a false God that have taken over God's people. Now, you know, whenever there is any wrong going on in the land, there's always somebody around who are pushing that which is wrong. Amen, somebody. And uh, there's a lot of people around today who is pushing against what is wrong and others are pushing against what wrong they claim is right. Now I know and you know that shooting anybody in the back seven times, amen somebody, really haven't done any harm and when you put your knee on somebody's neck and hold it down for eight, nine, ten minutes, you know that's wrong but there are some people around who say it's all right. Come on here, talk to me somebody. But, but, but we, will, we will protest against that. Amen. Because uh, Dr. C.L. Franklin said, if people never hear anything to the contrary, they believe anything. Amen. So there have to be somebody around who is willing to stand up and call wrong by his name. Amen. It's wrong to shoot our people down like that. It's wrong to keep your neck, your knee on somebody's knee. It's just wrong to do it all the way. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wrong. It's wrong. And don't be afraid to say it's wrong. And I said, I hope come November, everybody will get together and tell those folks on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue, it's wrong down there. And we're going to bring in somebody that's going to do God's work. Come on, talk me up somebody.
you have anything you can think about that could ever turn you away from God? Can you think of anything that will turn you away from God? Now the people of the camp, they are God's people. They are people who were once held in slavery and they prayed to God to come and get them. And God came and rescued them and brought them through the Red Sea and brought them to the new land and now they have turned their backs on God and gone on to find a new God. Talk to me here somebody. On anybody that has been helpful to you, why would you turn your back on somebody like that? Well, I came with the answer. The answer is, whenever anybody turns from that which is good and turns to that which is bad, it's because there's a push, a push or somewhere. Now, in our text, that, that is Miss Jezebel. Yeah. Miss Jezebel. And King Ahab, and they are all bail pushers. They man come out. They push and bail. They push and bail. Now, God's people have been called to go out into the world and evangelize the world and 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 help them to come to God. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, their job is to go and get people and bring them to God. Now, uh, this is sort of around here, I don't see no more. But what do you think about the doctor that's supposed to heal you? And you get that and he's sick. What do you, what do you think about a talk show? Come to get you, you broke down, and he breaks down on the way trying to come to you. What, what do you think? Something like that. Now, if God asked his people to go and bring people to him, and they end up being evangelized by the enemy and turn against God, ain't that something? Talk to me, that's all. Blow your home right there, that's all right. How would you try to get a God that have brought you from a mighty, mighty long way? And they got, now they are members of Baal Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. God people down there at Baal Tabernacle dancing and jumping and hollering and, and talking about Baal is the one who brought us and Baal is the God who give us uh, rain and God and Baal is the God who give us food. Ain't that something? And when God has been so good to us, and then we turn that back to God. Somebody said, man, right there. Hey, talk to me here, something. Well, I must do y'all. I must do y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blow home one more time. I know you're there. Now, now, Elijah, Elijah comes out. Now, you know, talking is cheap. A lot of folks can talk, but they don't follow through. Do, do a lot of talking. Yeah, but if you talk something, then back up uh, by getting things done. And Elijah came to God's people and told them, now listen, we will have a context. So, yeah, yeah. You get, and you read that verse, it says that they came with their God's spool. But Elijah comes with his God singular. So it's God against one God. But when you have tried God, and you know what God can do and will do, you can stand up for God. Talk to me here, somebody. I said, I said, if you know what God has done for you, you will stand up, amen, and give him support every time. So and even though you're outnumbered, but you know God would work. You would stand, even if you had to stand by yourself, stand in the house. And you're standing on the promise. So, now the, the, the sad part about this whole thing to do is, you're going up to a place called Mount Carmel. And you have a protest. He 
Elijah was God and those people with uh, Baal. They're going up there. Now, uh, our God is omnipotent. He all power. Omniscient, all wisdom, immutability, the same today, yeah, and yesterday. And he's unlike present, which means he is everywhere at the same time. Now, how do you think these crazy people got bailed up to Mount Carmel? How do you think they got paid to Mount Carmel? I don't hear nobody, so okay. Now, what, what, what will you do with a God that you got to get a U-Haul truck and carry him everywhere you want him? Yeah, yeah, they, they had to carry him. Frank they made them. And now they can carry him up to the hill to protest against our God. But our God is sitting there waiting on him. Nobody got to carry God. God moves on his own. He got all power. Come on, yes, sir. All power in his hand. And he's able, God. Now, here's another part of this thing. And I, I know if I had been in that crowd, I, I would have been tired. And I would have given up. The Bible said it starts praying around 9 o'clock in the morning. And at 3 o'clock, it's still praying, trying to get Baal to come and fight against our God. And uh, the record says that they got so ecstatic that they got knives out of them, cut themselves, bleeding, and all that sort of thing. And you know, in order to be a member of Baal Tabernacle, on, you had to sign a document saying that I give my children over to the fire gun. Because he was that kind of but, but you know, uh, Elijah, like us, sometimes you just get tired of nonsense. Now, if you were to start doing anything at 9 o'clock in the morning, and then 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you ain't got it done yet. I don't think you're going to ever get it done. Hmm? So, so Elijah decided to say, now, you had a chance, yeah, to get your God here. And he started making fun of him, saying, well, maybe your God is on a vacation. Or maybe your God is trying to help somebody else, and he can't get here to help you. And so Elijah said, well, let me call on my God. And the God that answers by fire will follow him. And it did not take Elijah all day to call on God. He then looked up and said, Father, I stretched my hands to thee. There's no other help I know. If thou would draw thy self for me, oh, where shall I go? And the Bible tells us that the fire came down. We serve a God who would answer us when we call him. Yeah, and before I sit down, I want to hear somebody say, He's all right. I said, it's all right. He makes a way for you. I said, it's all right. Yes, yeah, it's all right. He's been good to us. He brought us from a mighty long way. He's all right, baby. Yeah. Amen. The preacher let us know that our God is an all right God. Our God can do anything. There's no failure in God. What he done on yesterday, we discover when our four parents told us that our God can do anything. I don't know about you, but I discovered that our God is a great God. And he got all power in his hand. So we're going to open up the doors. You know, want to join this church or somebody else's church. Let us know. Be led by the Spirit. Because the word of God said, whosoever will, let him come. Come to the house of God and then you will discover how great and how wonderful our God is. Our God is a wonderful God. Is there one out of the heart of safety? Now don't have a God on their side. Why don't you come right now? 
the preacher told us that our God has been a good God. He's been a way maker. If you trust him, you can doubt him. He'll open the door for you. If you believe in the power of prayer, that you can stand right where you are, put your hands on your stand well. Let us pray. Precious Father, we come to you. Knowing that there is nowhere else we can turn to. Where we can guarantee victory. So in the name of Jesus Christ right now, we open up our hearts to you. We ask you to touch our minds and give us the mind of Christ. We understand, Lord, that you're watching. You are on your throne. Even with all of the calamity that's going on in the world, even with all of the nasty things that are being done to your people, we acknowledge that you are still on your throne and there is nothing that no one can do to stop you from moving on our behalf. We thank you for the word that was given us by your servant on this day. And your servant came to let us know that there is no other God but you. There is no other power but you. And if we would simply turn from our evil ways and turn to you, Lord, you can heal this land. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to move right now. We ask your spirit to release into this place the power of and the peace and the joy and the understanding that only you can give us. Right now, right now, touch those who are going through bereavement. Breathe on their household. Whoa, right now, Lord, we thank you for this awesome shepherd that you placed in our midst. We call him Pastor. That Reverend Dr. Weldon McWilliams Jr., thank you, Lord. Thank you for the members, those that are home and those that are here at the church house. And we admit right now, Lord, that we need you. There's so much sadness out here. Even your people are depressed. But we know that whatever you touch must be changed. We know that whatever you breathe on has to grow. Breathe on us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. And we ask you right now, Lord, that if there's anything that we've said, that we've done, that we've thought outside of your will, your people. We repent right now. I thank you for today. Whatever happened yesterday, you got us through it. We thank you that whatever happens tomorrow, as long as we put our faith in you, you'll bring us through it. We love you. We need you. We worship you. We praise you. And most of all, we love you. This we pray with power. This we pray with commitment. This we pray knowing that there is nothing better than you. No one is powerful as you. We love you. Bless us. This we pray in the mighty name 
of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank him 
for providing us with this stage. Amen. Amen. And not only that, and not only that, these fellows that work overtime. Amen. Come on, we're gonna thank God for them. My announcements at this time. Amen. church. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Reverence to our pastor, Dr. Walden McWilliams Jr., the pastor of this church, and to Reverend Howard and our esteemed audience behind us. These are your announcements from the church. And this is the church in the village of Spring Valley. Amen. Where lives are changed and souls are saved. Dr. Mac Williams, these are our announcements. Let us take heed to these announcements. August 29th, yesterday, a special thanks to First Baptist Church for our back to school book bag drive. Give it up, amen. A job well done. Today at 4 p.m., men of Rockland County all men concert right here in the parking lot and it is a free will offering and if you need to hear what is going to happen our own minister Benny Holm is our MC, and that will be at 4 p.m. please uh, contact brother Fred Murphy and that number is 845-480-4899 our absentee applications are available and you can see Trustee Street, their applications today, as well as Wednesday from 1 to 4. Our pastor hold Wednesday appointment hours, and that is also 1 to 4 p.m. Please call for an appointment. And our pastor will be meeting with our presidents and all vice presidents. Again, our pastor will be meeting with our presidents and all vice presidents and that is September 9th, and the meeting will take place in the lower auditorium. Please wear your mask and follow social distancing protocol. Again, that is September 9th at 7 p.m. here at the church. Our Sunday school hours are now 9 a.m., and that will continue from September through December 2020. Precepts are available, and you can purchase your small or large precept. Please see Superintendent Walker. All right, we're doing good with our announcement. Praise God. Okay. Continue to be a blessing to others today. Always remember, God is love, and keep the faith, and keep trusting God during our pandemic, COVID-19. Be blessed. Have a great day. Amen. Now I'm just going to hear some remarks from our mayor, amen, our mayor Simon at this time, amen, we're going to hear from him. Mayor, is that my mic Should be. Should be. Here. I was at your last stop to a service, and I came here because this is the very core. This congregation Amen. is the very core of the village of Spring Valley. And it's one of the older congregations, and its people have brought honor on themselves and on the village of Spring Valley. Amen. And your pastor has brought honor in terms of this church, and in terms of traveling through these very difficult times. And he is a strong and good leader to lead us through these times, and I mean all of us. It's so very important. As a government leader, and I hope you don't take this as disrespectful because I took an oath to make all lives matter. Amen. And I am, and I do 
do take it very seriously. This is something we have to do. And in order to be successful in the American tradition, we must treat Spring Valley as a family, and all people belong to that family who seek to belong. Nobody is excluded for any reason, and we have to live together to make this community a stronger community. Amen. We are working together to bring in levels of jobs and finding jobs for people in the village of Spring Valley because we face a very difficult time today. Many people have lost their job. Good people, solid people, community people, church people, and they are entitled to have an opportunity and happiness. And happiness sometimes is going to work even though you might not have to do like the job. But it is the money that you get, the security that you get, and the strength that you get so that you can start in one place and move to another and improve based upon your individual talents and skills and ability, which are great, and you have an ability to grow. I, I, you know, I, I prepared nothing when I came here. I didn't expect to speak, but I love being a part of this congregation, and I have for so many years that I've been in Rockland County. Thank you so much for letting me speak. singing amen that it be at four o'clock god is good i want to thank everybody for taking part and i'm going to have our reverend howard when come at this time he will give us our closing and then we'll be on our way reverend howard. now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to reject you before his presence with a city of great joy. Only wise God our Savior, dominion, majesty, and power, now henceforth and forevermore. Says you don't do anything, amen. Let's just give a big horn and then we'll be on our way. Thank God for this group. As you go out, please make sure you go over the ramp. We don't want to go over the wires. Make sure you go over that little hump, okay? Do not drive over the wires. Thank you. Amen.